The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, and thank you for calling in to our informational webinar on the FY22 Coping with Drought Letter of Intent Review. My name is Britt Parker, and I'm the manager of this grant competition. Before I give an overview of the webinar today, I want to thank all of you who took the time to develop your ideas and submit a letter of intent. We saw some really great innovative projects and we appreciate your time and energy. I also want to set expectations for this webinar. We want to use this time to clarify our feedback and dig a bit deeper into it generally to help inform your next steps. What we will not be doing today is answering specific questions about your LOI project idea. If after today you still have questions, you're welcome to reach out and schedule a 15 minute meeting with me next week. But even in these one-on-one -on -one discussions, we'll focus on the review of the relevance of your LOI to the funding call. So today I'm gonna to rehash the FY22 Coping with Drought competition focus and requirements. I'll review the LOI review process take a look at the LOIs by the numbers, and then we'll dig into the general feedback we provided and pause for clarifying questions. And I'll end with a couple slides on the full proposal process and take questions on that as well. We understand that the GoToWebinar platform and question box is somewhat limiting in terms of the ability to ask follow-up questions, but it's the cleanest platform for recording the webinar, your questions, and sharing information with those who cannot join us today. So we appreciate your understanding. Please feel free to enter questions at any time in the chat box leading up to the Q&A periods and during those periods as well. So as a reminder, the focus of the FY22 Coping with Drought, Building Tribal Drought Resilience Competition is applications developed by or in full partnership with tribal nations to fund the implementation of actions together with research on those actions to build drought resilience contained in existing plans and strategies. Plans may include, but are not limited to, drought contingency plans, drought, water, or natural resource management plans, agricultural resource management plans, or climate adaptation plans. Now I wanna take a few minutes to highlight the guidelines for applicants and ask you to keep referring back to these as you consider the development of a full proposal. Proposals will, meaning they must, demonstrate full partnership of tribal nations by including at least one full investigator on the project representing a federally recognized tribe. They will demonstrate an integrated project team with or considering partners from public and private sectors, academia, including tribal colleges and universities, local, regional, tribal, and federal government entities, non-governmental organizations, environmental groups, intertribal councils and consortia, tribal LOT organizations, citizen groups, etc. Proposals will demonstrate adherence to the guiding principles of tribal engagement as defined in the NIDAS Tribal Drought Engagement Strategy, which include respecting tribal sovereignty, ensuring trust and reciprocity, and ensuring drought-related work is culturally appropriate and useful for tribal nations. As part of the description of project activities, you need to provide detailed information on the activities to be conducted, including locations, sites, timeline, and seasons, species and habitat to be affected, possible construction activities, and any environmental concerns that may exist, as NOAA must analyze the potential environmental impacts as required by the National Environmental Policy Act. Proposals may demonstrate external contributions, um, for example, in-kind contributions and or funding to be leveraged with the re federal research funds, though there's no match or cost share requirements. They may leverage previous or ongoing work related to climate and drought vulnerability assessments and planning, such as those funded under the BIA Tribal Resilience Grants or the Department of Interior Climate Adaptation Science Centers, etc. But again, this isn't a requirement. Um, and finally, an additional guideline is that project teams are encouraged to work with the NIDAS tribal coordinator, who can't be with us today, but will be available um, throughout the life of the project, 
to share outcomes and lessons learned with other tribal nations and tribal organizations where appropriate, and to strengthen national tribal drought preparedness and response. So now let's jump into the review process. The LOIs were reviewed based on relevance to this funding announcement, its focus and requirements. Each LOI was reviewed by at least three people well-versed in the purpose and scope of the funding announcement. If you received feedback, that means that one or more of the reviewers thought your letter of intent was potentially deficient in one or more areas identified in the announcement. And remember, this is not a review of the quality of the proposed idea. Rather, the review at this stage is focused on the fit or scope of the idea relative to the funding announcement. Based on the reviews, each LOI received one of the following four recommendations. Strongly encouraged, encouraged with modifications, discouraged without major modifications, or strongly discouraged. Strongly encouraged means that your LOI substantively responded to all required elements as described in the funding announcement. Encouraged with modifications means your LOI responded to almost all of the required elements as described in the funding announcement. But in order to be competitive at the full application stage, some attention will need to be given to strengthen the response to certain requirements. If you receive discouraged without major, major modifications, this means your LOI did not substantively respond to some of the required elements as described in the funding announcement and that it would not be competitive at the full application stage without significant changes. And finally, strongly discouraged means your LOI was not relevant or did not substantively respond to the required elements as described in the funding announcement. And we do not think the LOI would be competitive at the full application stage. Again, the intent of this review is on relevance or fit to the competition. There were some good ideas that came in that we felt were outside the scope of the competition. We are trying to be respectful of your time, your partner's time, and the time of the technical experts who will serve on the panels to review the final proposals and be honest about their relevance to this competition and its focus. Before we dig into the feedback, I want to give you a sense of the level of competition this year. So our total anticipated funds for the two years is $1.5 million per year for a total of $3 million for the competition. And we anticipate awarding between six to seven projects with funding of up to $500,000 each over the two years through cooperative agreements. I will note that if a number of projects come in below that $500,000 total mark, we may be able to fund more than six to seven projects. That will just be a function of what we receive and how those rank at the end of the competition. So we received 22 LOIs that were reviewed. We outright discouraged two, we discouraged without major modifications five, and we encouraged with modifications seven. And then there were eight that were strongly encouraged, meaning that reviewers felt they really hit the mark in terms of fit to this competition. The 22 LOIs totaled a request of $9,076,000. When we compare this to the 3 million total we anticipate over the two years, I think we can agree that the competition will be stiff and we really encourage you to take the feedback on your LOI to heart before proceeding to the full proposal development. I've also broken down the total requested for each of the feedback categories to give you a sense of the magnitude of the requests which fell under each. Before we dive into the feedback, I really want to distill into two questions what we feel is most important as you prep or consider prepping your full proposal. Those are, what existing tribal plan or strategy does the action in the proposal address? And what is the research question I am asking about the actions to be implemented? If you can't answer these as you work on your full proposal, we encourage you to really consider if this competition is a good fit. So upon review of the LOIs and based on the requirements of the competition, we found that feedback fell into one of these five categories. 
General feedback number one was full partnership with one or more tribal nations is required. Um, and I should say one or more tribal representatives, um, not tribal nations. Uh, please include at least one full investigator on the project representing a federally recognized tribe. This is a key aspect of this competition and it must be met to be competitive at the full proposal stage. And this is really meant to ensure that we are being responsible, responsive to the needs of our tribal partners. General feedback number two was, the focus of this competition is drought. It's fine to nest drought in the context of climate change, but there must be very clear linkages to drought. So we had a number of LOIs that were, where honestly drought seemed like a bit of an afterthought, um, and so, again, nesting drought in the context of, of climate change more generally is fine, but we need to see those direct linkages to drought in order for the uh, proposal to be competitive. The third general feedback was, this competition is focused on implementing actions to build drought resilience contained in an existing tribal plan or strategy. Please articulate what plan or strategy this project is addressing. And again, this is very important. Um, and, and this is, again, to ensure that we are being responsive to the needs of the tribal nations and our tribal partners. General feedback number four was, this competition requires that there be a research component to the project based on the action to be implemented. Please carefully read the information sheet for the competition and include a research component in the full proposal. And this is a key requirement that I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into in a moment. So I'm going to move on. The final uh, feedback was please articulate a long-term plan for maintenance and operations of any monitoring stations that are to be installed. And we want to ensure that you're thinking about this so that any monitoring equipment that might be installed is cared for and remains operational into the future. So I wanna spend a little bit more time on the need to include a research question. Um, and I'm going to read over some of the examples of the kinds of questions you might ask about the action you're implementing. And this research component is not geared to a publication or peer-reviewed literature, though it could be if you have interest in that, but it's really being about able to articulate at the end best practices, lessons learned, and sharing at the end of your project. So some of the example research questions include, and bear with me because I am going to read through them, what metrics will you use to know when you are in drought, drought is worsening, or drought is improving? For example, observe changes in plant or animal behavior or landscape changes that indicate drought. How will these feed into monitoring and evaluation of your action? The second is, how can a monitoring and evaluation process be designed and implemented that incorporates traditional ecological knowledge or traditional knowledge and or cultural values to define and assess the success of the action to build drought resilience? What metrics will you use to understand whether drought impacts have been reduced or minimized based on your actions? Are planning processes and implementation of actions that adhere to traditional ways of knowledge and adapting more effective? And how is the effectiveness of these processes and actions defined and captured? Some additional questions could be, is there a consideration of observed or future trends, climate change, land use, population, et cetera, in the actions to build drought resilience? And if not, how might the actions be adapted to incorporate these trends to increase likelihood of success? What process or criteria are used to determine which actions to undertake and where they should be implemented? For example, what approaches, tools, metrics, and or analysis are used or need to be developed to understand the full range of benefits and cost, inclusive of traditional knowledge and cultural, ecological, and other values of importance of potential actions? And finally, how can this project improve and document our understanding of the cultural, economic, human health, ecological, and, and or other cost of impacts? So you can certainly come up with your own research questions that are meaningful and helpful to you as you implement these actions. And please feel free to reach out to me if you want to discuss this requirement in more detail. 
So I want to circle back and reiterate some of these key questions, these two key questions um, that uh, I really can't emphasize enough. The first is what existing tribal plan or strategy does the action in the proposal address? And what is the research question you're asking about that action that is to be implemented? And so I want to pause here for a moment and see if there are any questions um, about the general feedback um, or the need to have a research component to the project. And I'll just give everybody a couple moments to type those questions if they have them into the question panel. Um, so the first is, um, thanks for doing the webinar, you're very welcome. And given that this is to be funded through a cooperative agreement with NIDIS, to what extent should the research questions be co-developed with NIDIS? Um, so I appreciate that question and um, you've hit on, and I don't think I, I mentioned this in the kind of requirements, but these will be funded as cooperative agreements, which is a grant mechanism that just calls for more substantive involvement um, with us, with the funder. So um, this looks like things like um, we do quarterly uh, calls, update calls with our grantees um, who receive cooperative agreements. And this just allows more interaction between NIDIS and the, um, the funding recipient. And so specifically, you're asking about to what extent should the research questions be co-developed with NIDIS? Um, it's, it's kind of ironic in that we, um, it is a cooperative agreement, but that interaction does not start until funding decisions are made. So we cannot um, engage with you individually as you develop your proposal and um, in, in this way. And that is to make sure that it's an even playing field um, so that we're not giving you know any um, upper hand or additional information, whether intentionally or not, to any um, specific applicant. Um, so you do not need and can't really um, co-develop these questions with us. But that's why we kind of included some examples is to give you an idea of kind of what we're thinking um, and you know, of course, as I mentioned, um, we want this to be meaningful to you as the those implementing the projects. And so if you go beyond, you know, some of those examples, that's fine as well. But I would just, you know, say, remember um, what NIDIS is as a program and, and kind of our interest in increasing drought resilience and, you know, formulate questions that are going to help us um, share best practices and lessons learned. Um, but hopefully that answers the question. And if not, please do follow through. Does modeling for prediction address research? So there were um, a subset of proposals that, um, you know, included more of, uh, you know, I guess a, a more of a, an academic kind of research component. And, and that is fine. But I would encourage you to still consider um, you know, some of these more applied questions that really help us understand how to best serve our tribal partners in building drought resilience. Um, but but yes, that that would, um, you know, modeling for prediction and, and the outcome of that would um, certainly represent a research component. Let's see. In the case of the project, in the case of a project focused on additional planning and design before implementation, does the research question need to be fully answered by the end of the project? That's a great question. And as I was reading through some of the example questions, which, you know, kind of speak to setting up more of a monitoring and evaluation structure, um, you may not have full answers by the end of the project, but in part, us including those types of questions are, we're hoping to kind of um, 
you know, lead you to be able to set up a monitoring and evaluation process or be thinking through that as you design the project such that um, even if it's not at the end of the two years, um, you know, down the line, you're able to say something about the success or efficacy of the action that you've implemented. So, um, no, I, I think that depending on what you're doing and what question you're trying to answer, it may not be fully answered by the end of the project. Um, and hopefully we can continue our relationship and, and learn from you as the project uh, continues. Relative to existing tribal plan, does it need to be specific to drought or can it be broader plans with relevance to drought? It can absolutely be broader plans. So we recognize that um, some tribal nations have gone through a very specific drought planning process, but others have developed adaptation, climate adaptation plans or other plans that touch on drought. So as long as there is relevance to drought, it can be used. Uh, follow up. Can we propose specific activities that would leverage or require assistance from NIDIS, such as technical expertise? And would this be relevant to the cooperative nature of the cooperative agreement funding mechanism? Yes. So if you want to propose activities and, you know, you want to have technical expertise from either NIDIS or some of our other partners, other parts of NOAA, um, other entities that work in drought related, um, you know, fields, that is fine. And you can specify that. Um, so yeah, that's not a problem. And yeah, I would say that does help address kind of this cooperative nature of, of you know, this funding mechanism um, in that, you know, we're working closely together with you. Um, but I would also say that it doesn't require that level of engagement. Um, but yes, that's fine. For those of you who might not be, you know, um, proposing something where you would want someone from NIDAS or, or NOAA to take part in various aspects of the project, that, that's not required. But, um, but that would, I think, um, also demonstrate the cooperative nature. Any other questions? I'll pause for just another moment and give you time to type. Um, okay, so I'm going to continue, but if questions pop into your mind, please do feel free to add them. And at the end, I'll circle back to the question box. Um, Let's see, got to get my cursor in the right place. So if you do still have questions on the feedback you received or want to talk a little bit more about that research aspect of the uh, requirements, I am offering 15 minute long meeting slots next week to discuss. Um, you know, again, we'll focus more on the fit to the competition versus the nitty gritty of your project proposal, um, but I am very happy to speak with you. And there's a link to access um, this site to schedule those meetings in your feedback letter. And I'll also put that in the chat box at the end. Um, in order to do that, I have to shut down the presentation. So I'll wait and put that in at the end and make sure I give you time to copy it if you need to. So to wrap up, I want to focus on the full proposal submission. Um, full applications are due 5 p.m. Eastern on October 18th, 2021. And I just want to reiterate 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, if you submit your proposal 5 p.m. Mountain Time, we will not be able to consider it for the competition. So that 5 p.m. Eastern is, is super important. Um, and please do not wait till the last minute to log in and submit your um, proposal to grants.gov. Um, there can be challenges in getting the account set up and some of the basic information needed in order to apply. Um, so please start early. If you have any problems, uh, the, the grants online or the grants.gov help desk is wonderful. Um, but if you wait till the very end and you have a problem, um, it, that's not um, going to be uh, something that we can use to accept a late proposal. So um, please, please, please start early. And make sure that you read the full notice of federal funding opportunity completely and provide all the required information. So the requirements specific to this comp competition are in the information sheet, but um, there are um, requirements and information on, you know, things like page limits and required components to the proposal in grants.gov. So please, those appear in the full notice of federal funding opportunity. So please, please, please read those carefully um, so that we can um, 
send your proposal through the full review process. I will, again, post links to all this information at the very end. Um, I wanted to remind you that the full proposal review will take place in three stages. Um, the first is an administrative review, and that just looks at completeness of the proposal, that it has all the required components, eligibility, et cetera. Um, and then we move into two independent panel reviews. Um, the first is on tech, a technical review. The second is on importance and relevant, relevance and application applicability to the program and the competition. Um, so that first panel has a final weight of 60% for technical review, the second panel 40% for relevance. Um, and in order to move to the second panel, um, the projects must score at least a three out of five to move forward. And please note that we will endeavor to make these panels very diverse and include tribal representation to assist us with the review of your proposals. So that is our intent. A final reminder that resources can be found on the NOAA Climate Program Office website under funding opportunities, as well as on drought.gov. Um, and just again, um, more of these links that you'll need um, to all of this key information, which I'll put in the chat box in a minute. Um, I also note that a recording of this webinar will be avail made available on drought.gov and you as attendees will also receive a link to the recording in case you wanna go back and listen to any portion of it. And you can always contact me for additional information or any questions you have throughout the process. Um, let's see. I think that's it on that slide. So um, thank you for taking the time to attend the webinar today. Um, I will check the Q&A box for any final questions. And I am going to end the PowerPoint so that I can uh, put the links into the chat box as I'm giving you time to uh, type in your questions. So let me do that. And go ahead and type any final questions you might have. So in the chat box, the first link is to schedule one of those 15 minute meetings. Um, and then we have both the ability to access the notice of federal funding opportunity and information sheets on drought.gov as well as the climate program office. So let me flip back to the question box. Do we have any additional questions at this time? Okay, if a tribe has a full complement of researchers and planners, do we need to partner with others? No, absolutely not. I was um, I, I think that's that's great if you're able to do it, um, you know, internally and you have that capacity. So that is absolutely fine. Um, yeah, no need to include others outside of, of the tribe. Anything else before we wrap up? Okay, well, thank you again so much for taking the time to attend. And we hope that by doing this, we, you know, kind of clarify um, some of the feedback we've provided. Um, if you do decide to put a full proposal in for the competition, we wish you the best of luck through the process. And for those that are successful, we're really excited about this competition and what may come out of it. And we really look forward to working with you in the future. Um, so, uh, yeah, so thank you again. Um, you have my email. Please do not hesitate to reach out at any point in the process. 
once full applications are in, it is quite a long process we go through for review, um, and that can take time. But um, if you reach out to me during that time, I'm happy to at least let you know where we are in the process. Um, but given these start dates are not until um, September 1st of 2022, it does feel like it drags on. So do please feel free to reach out to me at any point. And thank you again, and I hope you have a wonderful day. And I'm going to leave this um, open for just another minute or two in case you want to uh, pull any of the links from the chat box. Um, but if there's no other questions, um, we'll go ahead and end the webinar. Thank you again.